<laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of It's Me, Not You. Hello, Melissa. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm wonderful. Hi, Jake. How are you? Hi, I'm phenomenal. So we are actually recording this on St. Patrick's Day. So happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone, if you're listening to this in the future. And for today, we wanted to talk about intuition and creativity and how you can blend the two things together to have amazing experiences and why maybe <clears throat> tapping into your intuition kind of sparks more creativity inside of you. So I'm going to start with you, Jake, and kind of take us down the road of creativity and intuition and what that kind of means for you. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I think that right off the bat, when we step back and take a look at both of those, and we're kind of looking at the Venn, di Venn diagram of what they have to do with one another, um, they're both left brain, left brain activities, creativity, artwork, poetry, um, all of that fun stuff, as well as intuition, all live in the same kind of corner of the neighborhood. Um, and I think that a lot of my practice uses creativity just in my own personal development aspect, um, as well as my personal kind of rituals. I do love to have some time to just draw, um, some time to write. Um, sometimes poetry is really um, cathartic to do as well. Um, <clears throat> so really why I love to encourage everybody to use creativity, especially when you are flexing the psychic muscle or let's say even for magical work creativity um, can be anything you know it could be crafting things through hobbies it can be you know um, painting drawing uh, whatever it might be pottery whatever um, it really it, it does a couple different things but I kind of always think in my brain it's almost like when you are it, it, it's it, it's a channeling process you know when you're let's say you're doing artwork for example your brain isn't necessarily thinking about the bills or what you have for upcoming projects anything like that you're really just allowing this state of flow to happen mm -hmm. and I really find that when you're in creative or artistic flow that is I would say pretty much almost identical to psychic flow you know yeah. in terms of its vibration you know um and a lot of times certain spirits will come forward in times of creativity. Um, the muses will often come forward. We always talk about that. Um, muses working with musicians, muses working with um, writers, authors, all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So I do think that it makes perfect sense that by using creativity or stepping into a hobby that engages that artistic side of your brain, you really are kind of forcing yourself to deconstruct the framework of the mind that really allows you to kind of bypass that logical um, 2d mm -hmm. thinking and allows yourself to be a little bit more open to the abstract or open to the obscure um so i definitely find that in my workshops or working with clients that when i encourage them to do something like that that might feel silly to some people um i have definitely seen a palpable difference even just the way that they kind of step into their practice of of allowing themselves to be open to receiving a message it seems like that becomes a little bit more fluid and then they in turn become a little bit more receptive to messages, symbols, signs, no matter how seemingly out there they might be, you know, so it allows us to be kind of flexible. I like that. You know, yeah. Oh, and you, Melissa. Sorry, Jake. Yeah, no, go for it. <laughs> so for me, it's that creativity inspires my inspiration to like my third eye kind of work so for me creativity is our sacral <clears throat> shock um and creativity is doing something that you get excited about it's creation but it doesn't have to be art like okay. if you hand me a palette or something of paint and tell me to draw I get super anxious like that is paint and sip nightmare for me I am not like that artistic with painting, but you let me play with my cricket, I'm all in, you know, t-shirt designs or, um, you know, mugs or, or whatever it is. I like to arrange flowers, you know, that's creative for me. Um, I was doing, I love planning my gardens out and it was one of my old roommates, Allie. She said, I get it. This is your creative process. This is your living art. And it is because you're balancing colors and heights and structure and, but you're creating something that's living. So, and once you're in that space, it does, it relaxes that, that day framework that we have to allow spirit to come in because when our framework is high, our ego is high. 
or if our ego is high, it's hard to hear spirit. Mm -hmm. That's why if you're too much in your head, it can be hard to hear spirit. You know, that's why we meditate or why we journey, but you don't have to do those things because being creative is doing that. Maybe it's needlework. Maybe it's, I don't know, um, sewing or, you know, whatever it is that makes you feel creative. It doesn't have to be something that you feel is uncomfortable Mm -hmm. because then that's, that's defeating the entire purpose of being creative in the first place. Or maybe your creativity is, you know, deciding what outfits you're going to put together. You know, it's whatever makes it, it fun for you in a relaxing state. Mm -hmm. And I think it even goes as far as, you know, even just setting up your space in your area that's tapping into creativity and also into your intuition, almost like I was uh, reading an article the other day about where to place your bed, you know, and, and where it should go and it shouldn't be facing the door because that's the death doorway. Cause when you're, uh, this is really off topic, but no, I was like, Oh, it's actually cool. very good for St. Patrick's day. So one of your muses must be talking <laughs> to you. That is an Irish tradition. So I just, I mean, but I, I, I feel like, like you, you both have hit on it. It's, it may not necessarily look at what a typical creative venture is like drawing or painting or sewing. Like for me, I take a lot of joy in just doing graphic design. I find that to be very creative and I really enjoy doing it. And I do feel like I get into a certain zone and a certain space of mind. And I, you know, see in my sister's process, she's very, very creative. And it's interesting with her not being very spiritual. I bet you she's doing some sort of channeling you know, as she's getting into that zone and that flow, like right now she's creating these huge 3d flowers. And I'm like, that just takes on so much energy and so much, uh, creativity. It's like, it, it, it fascinates me. And I, I just, I do think it's very interesting. And I, and I think it's really cool how you both like, cause you both make candles, you both make products, you know, that are creative and that you can kind of, I guess maybe, both of you want to walk through your process and you don't have to say this is how I make a candle but how does please tell me how you make a candle no but how do you tap into that one because I know with Jake like he learned how to dress candles and dream time you know with his Mm -hmm. ancestors and then um, from Melissa I'm sure she also learned from spirit so you're tapping in a to the creativity but also into your intuition so I'll start with you Jake if you want to talk a little bit about that yeah definitely so um during the kind of crafting process it really is it's such a really fun mix between that kind of creativity and then also that intuition because I kind of sit down and I really make it a habit to not come up with a strict um baseline Mm -hmm. for my candles like there isn't going to be a candle made the same exact way anytime and that's across the board no matter if you buy a love candle from me, a health candle from me, whatever that is, when I show up, I am tapping into the person that it's for. I'm sitting in front of all the different plants or all the different gems that I might be working with. And I'm kind of just allowing myself to step back, recline out of my head for a minute and then say, who wants to play? Who wants to chat? You know, who's peeking their head around and want to interact with us here? It's really it's a lot of fun when you think about it in that kind of perspective, because it becomes collaborative, you know, Um, I, I, and to even step back when we think about, you know, what's the point of using creativity here? Um, We're stepping into the archetype of the creator, the creator or the creatrix, which is really quite beautiful um, because it allows us to channel something, whether that be our higher self, whether that be spirit, angels, guides, another person, client work that we're doing, um, allows us to kind of match those energies to where I am right now. What is my point of view? What's my perspective? And what's the goal for this candle today? So I really just kind of allow the little plants or the little stones that want to come forward um, to kind of come to me. And I really just let the process go just like that. And if I'm only guided to use two ingredients, I'm guided to use two ingredients. You know, I think a while, a long time ago, I probably would have let the shoulder goblin tell me that I need to put extra or I needed to now do my research and put what I think should be in it and I really have found that that has just kind of fumbled the process for me and it becomes unfun um when you when you try to become too rigid um so the process is really so intuitive I allow it to be very open but more importantly I allow it to be fun you know, because when we think about it, you know, things that we enjoy creating, things that we uh, enjoy making, 
there's always a fine line between you know it becoming uncreative yay and then it becoming I'm a machine this is work uh you know I'm a manufacturer today (laughs) you know I also think (laughs) that if you kind of maybe go into that lower vibration the intention that you're trying to set inside of that candle may get skewed so you absolutely get a higher vibration you know um so how about for you Melissa I know you also have a pretty cool candle line as well I do mine was um like a don't give a shit type of candle I, I love it that's my emergency candle okay I'm like I know she's it's got something like my, really cool, guys <laughs> it's set so I use my cricket to make it but the okay. wording on the outside is like I'm down to my last mm, you know and oh look it's for last fire. Fire. we can cuss yeah. on this I okay. have it set for profanity <laughs> so it's and it's like, like, mm, on okay, fire okay. but I use the joy um incense from or not incense, the joy, oh, joy therapy, uh, yeah. young living. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I pour that in there. So if I'm really to the point where I'm down to like nothing left, then I need to bring joy. So that's like my emergency kind of reignite, um, candle, mm-hmm. but for me, inspiration and creativity that comes from the other side, because to be creative, to create something that has never been created before, or at least not with our spin on it, it doesn't come from thought because if we were thinking it, we would have had learned like the structure in, um, in making it. So for me, it's from the other side. So whether it's angels or, or, um, you know, the gnomes, like if you feel those little eyes that peer at you from under stairs or the thing in your closet, a lot of times those are the creative gnomes. They're the earth gnomes. So (laughs) the day that I went crazy on candles, um it was a moon and the angels just you know were like do what we tell you to do I had all these herbs my kitchen counter my whole peninsula was covered with herbs and they said just do what we say and it'll make sense after so I did and they told me that each candle would be like earth energy fire energy water energy all of the herbs would match to that and one herb would be matching to the new moon that was happening so I did what they said and then I had to wait and then look at the time on the clock and write it all down. So like one was an ancestor dreaming candle. And then when I looked at the time it matched and then it was crazy because I thought all herbs would be ruled by earth, but they're not, they're by water, um, fire. And it was correct. Like it was insane how I could put six different oils or herbs into a candle and they were all fire, all water. And I, I mean, the statistical possibility of that is not there. Mm -hmm. for that to happen you know so it's a way that they built trust with me too in what I was getting and what I was seeing you know and I think the other thing is is that you may not be someone who thinks that you're very creative but if you pick up maybe an item that maybe sparks some joy in you that maybe is you know like a piece of art or you know, maybe it's a plant, maybe it's an essential oil, it doesn't even matter what it is. Maybe it's something that your grandma made for you. And it kind of sparks that playfulness and that creative imagination type of feeling and flow. I I think that would be something pretty powerful to people for people to tap into. And what I'm, I'm also thinking, and I'm, I'm kind of jumping topics here is also like going to maybe a spiritual shop and seeking out something that may be a local, you know, crafter made, you know, and tap into that energy. Like, you know, we, our friend, Michelle, like she, she makes those beautiful goddess candles. And, you know, we have Laura who makes the beautiful trees and we have Tony now who's got these really cool, um, oh my gosh, crystal, crystal grids, thank you, crystal grid boards, you know, and I, and we have tons of friends that we're, we only name three, you know, of people that make these beautiful, you know, amazing products. And it's like, just looking at them, you can kind of, for me, like I can look at, you know, like Lindsay, I can see a picture right now on my wall. She did this beautiful chakra portrait. And it's like, when I look at that, well, it reminds me to connect to my chakras, but I'm also feeling the energy of Lindsay and the joy that she put into it. Kind of like with Jake, when every single candle, no, you're not going to get the same one ever. I love that. Like, it's not like a production line. Like it's, this is my energy, my intention. Like maybe I go to Jake and I'm like, I want an abundance candle. And he's like, all right, Rachel, this is what you need this month. But maybe next month you need something completely different. I just mm-hmm. think that's fascinating. It's so interesting. And 
I think also for people kind of see what draws you in. Like maybe it's dancing. Like right now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling a real call for movement and mm -hmm. like, you know, getting, you know, exercising and maybe doing yoga, but yoga and me kind of don't blend together. Cause I'm the most, I, I'm not flexible. I can barely touch my toes. So it's just not going to happen. You, you could do it again, <laughs> but now I really want to do swing dance. Like, that's what I really want to do. I'm like, I want to go take swing dancing lessons and guess what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to be chicken shit, but I'm going to be scared and I'm going to be embarrassed, but I'm, I want to do it. And I just, for me, if I even just saying it, it makes me like really excited. I'm like, I'm going to do swing dance. <laughs> like <I'm> so excited. <laughs> you guys like feel this call right now of like really tapping into this creativity and kind of like expand, like expanding out your skill set. That's how I feel. Yeah, definitely. For this year, for me, it's definitely been about, stepping back and really having time to just kind of be in my yes. practice back to my roots yes. um, and really just kind of connecting and grounding everything to find you know what do I want to do right now in this new chapter what what is something brand new what mm -hmm. is something that I put on the back burner that I've always wanted to kind of revisit um, but I think that you have a perfect point too is that especially you know movement like dance physical exercise or anything like that is really kind of in also in the same neighborhood because you're allowing energy to be channeled through the physical body and then also expressed or allowing yourself to interpret an experience through physical movement. Right. Um, so I think there's something to be said too as well, because not everybody, again, are visual people, you know, right. it's that funny thing that's been, been talked about the past couple of years, how some people aren't able to imagine something in their brain mm -hmm. with a visual, you know, sometimes, yeah. you know, if I say an apple to viewers, some people can't see an apple in the head, they'll see, they'll feel it, they'll, they'll know that we're thinking of an apple, but they won't see it exactly. Sure. Um, I, I, yeah, <clears throat> immediately I went to Snow White, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like yeah. You just don't know where you're going to go. What kind of apples are you handing out? <laughs> the beautiful ones. <laughs> Listen, if it'll get some of the winter weight off, I'll take it. Um, and I think that it's also something if you're not feeling called to create something physically, yeah. even going to a museum or going down yeah. to your farmer's market and looking at local mm -hmm. art, because I mean, I can only really speak from my personal experience, but as somebody who works with cards, whether that be Oracle cards or tarot cards, yeah. I work with cards that are very visual, very abstract. So I like to kind of let my mind, my creativity, that kind of spirit wander mm -hmm. in a session. I don't love the strict framework of just going off of a card because this is its baseline meaning. I love the visual because it gives possibility. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I think even just in general terms of wellness, you know, we always talk about um, wanting to work on neuroplasticity, you know, so encouraging people to read more because it allows your brain to expand and create new pathways. So I think that at any point that you're doing something abstract or you're taking advantages of ways to think differently or do a routine differently, you're really allowing yourself to nudge out of the comfort, out of the norm, mm -hmm. um, whether that be doing a task a different way or taking a different way home or going on a jog a different direction, when you do things a little bit more spur of the moment, a little bit more out of your gut feeling, out of your gut kind of inkling of what you would want, like to do or a path that you never explored before, you step out of your comfort zone and you allow yourself to be in a space of flow, yeah. of openness. You know what drives my family crazy the most is I never drive the same way. <laughs> <clears throat> I always drive different ways home no matter what they're like, where are you going now? I'm like, doesn't matter. I'll get there. Like, I just, I love to explore. And I, I, I really like to even like going out for drives, like, and just seeing the scenery and looking at houses and looking at trees. And I do feel like I get inspiration there. And Absolutely. It's like, it's kind of relax. It's relaxing for me. It's where I can clear my head. And I also feel like it's where I can manifest, you know, like before, this is really off topic. Before I met my partner, you know, I used to drive around Lake George all the time. And I was like, oh, I really want to place up at Lake George and this and that, blah, blah, blah. Guess what I have, you know? And it's just, you know, it, it's for me, it's powerful, but tapping into that energy of creativity. And I do feel like you get those insights from divine, you know, and those like creative hits and that, hey, even if you're not somebody who's spiritual, you are tapping into some flow of the universe that is going to open up your consciousness and, and expand out your awareness more to what's, you know, maybe things that are unseen. 
Mm -hmm. And creativity is a sliding scale. So if you're really left brain and you are a very like, I don't know, accountant kind of minded, there can still be creativity. And maybe it's just how you design your spreadsheet or about sacred codes. Those are all about yeah, yeah, right. Oh, yeah, I was doing that really well for a while, and then I, you know, I mean, there's, there's like, yeah, sliding scale, one hundred percent. Another, yeah, and you have to do with what you're comfortable. It's not about jumping off the deep end because then you're never gonna do it. Mm -hmm. So you know, setting a meeting up, I use all kinds of different structures for the meeting room depending on what I'm trying Mm -hmm. to get. You know, designs of the chairs or or table layouts. You know, the round table, the square, the the triangle, like you can be creative, even if you feel that you are a very logical kind of framework, that's where you start. And then the more comfortable that you get with your creativity, Mm -hmm. you know, the further along you can get into, um, you know, some of those other more typical artistic kind of creative ways of being. And, And I think I want to go back to the movement thing. Like when you, when you're moving your body and you're moving the energy that does open up a channel to kind of flow through you. Like one of the things I I do is like clean my house, whatever I feel like my, I'm a little feeling a little stuck. I'm I'm a little heavy in my head and whatnot. I I do like a deep cleaning of my house because I get the body moving and I'm listening to something like I might be listening to some mindset work or, you know, whatnot, because I want to kind of shift the energy and I want to get into a more you know, maybe more positive flow because maybe I was annoyed at the snowstorm or, you know, whatever. So mm-hmm. that was just this last Tuesday. So <laughs> and I, just, I wiped down my walls, face. guys. I wiped down the walls. I had a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday I wiped them down. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I love, I love moving the body, you know, like mind, body and, and soul. And I, I think a lot of it, we kind of forget that our body is a temple and that when we go within and we're tapped into that energy and we're taking care of that temple, we can be open to so much more creative inspiration, intuition, that divine that's coming into us. You know, I mm-hmm. think it's super important. And I think your movement part of creativity is also very linked to the natural cycles. I mean, even though we just got dumped on with snow, the trees, the plants are already starting to move their energy. Yeah. They're like, the bitch, I'm up. done with yeah. you, winter. <laughs> Our buds, you know, on on trees that were starting. So this is a natural time of, yeah. you know, wanting to detox bodies from the winter, um, adding more greens, you know, mm-hmm. into things. I mean, all of that's, that's creative as well. Mm-hmm. Kind of like coming out of a dormant state and going into a more awakened and inspired state and really yeah, in a very gentle way getting that body and that flow going any <clears throat> other advice jake that you may have about maybe someone who's looking to be more creative to tap more into their intuition any advice you can give to them um i would just say i mean listen to your gut follow what you think is fascinating or what you think is interesting you don't have to be a master at it and the goal does not have to be proficiency it yeah. just has to be a tool that you can play around with. It doesn't have to look pretty cute or anything. The point is that you're giving yourself a chance to let the logical mind go play. Yeah. And you're allowing your creative, that intuitive side to hold some space, to take them some space in the body. Um, the creativity is, yes, a great way to enhance intuition, um, but it's also a really beautiful way to heal burnout too, oh, you yes. know? for our friends that are hard at work, you know, or always working on the next project, balancing a bunch of different things. It's a great way when you feel that you are in a pressure cooker or that you are at like at your wits, your your wits end, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of that vacation in your own brain or in your own body to step back and just do something a little bit different. So I don't know, it could be a craft drawer or it can be finding a nice nature walk that you want to start doing. Um, a book of art, which is really beautiful too. It can even be music, you know, singing bowls, drums, uh, uh, isochronic beats, all that kind of stuff. Anything that allows your brain to float a little. What about for you, Melissa? Well, Maggie just handed me my yoga block. So I guess that's on oh. um, my docket. Now she's pulling out the meditation pillow. I love it. You know, and the other thing is, is that kind of what Jake said in the beginning, this is kind of a year for Helm to kind of say what excites him, what lights him up, kind of going back to 
Jake, who he is as a person, as an individual, and really putting himself first, you know, and like almost like self-care matters. And I, and I think that's really also important in a message that we do want to get across because I will say that that's something I'm also feeling as well is like, okay, well, what makes me happy? What makes me joyful? What is it that I want to learn and take on? And it may be odd hobbies like glass blowing. I really want to do that too. That would be fun. I love that. All right, guys, we're going to do a glass blowing episode. I cannot <laughs> wait. I am so excited. There is a place in Troy that does it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it, but see, just right there, we all kind of perked up we sparked up you know just by one little idea nugget that creativity and then we're all like shoot i'm gonna make a, a paperweight like it's just you know let's see what happens so just want to thank you all for listening to another episode of it's me not you please like and subscribe please leave a review and please share it with your friends anything else you guys like to add um please like share and subscribe the angels are watching angels are watching and they don't and want- we'll know <laughs> yeah right <laughs> All right, you guys, everyone have a great night. Bye.